So I'm trying to do like as few lines as possible because I don't want it to look like she has lipstick on. I want her upper lip to be a little bit round. So I'm going a little bit out of the natural lip line and just doing that sort of highlight. to my Atomic Googie Patreon collab video. This is one of the videos where my patrons and I choose a theme, and this time the theme is Atomic Googie. This is the fabulous group photo, but stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll show each of their dolls up close along with information on where you can find more of their work. Atomic refers to the Atomic Age, which began around 1945, and Googie refers to a style of architecture around that time which was influenced by car culture, jets, and space. You've seen this look if you've ever watched the cartoon The Jetsons. While we left this theme open to any sort of retro-futuristic vibe, the heart of the theme is based on a specific look celebrated during the mid-century when the excitement to get to the moon generated a wave of futuristic style in movies, architecture, fashion, and art. It was an interesting and exciting aesthetic of 1950s fashion mixed with how they interpreted the future to be at the time. This style is sometimes called ray gun gothic or atom punk and is recognized by its UFO shapes, spacesuits, ray gun gadgets, jetpacks, and robots. Stage fashion is bold colors, space themed accessories like oversized collars, and they combine pinup girl art with spacesuits and ray guns. I made one doll in this style before many years ago, but if you have followed me for a while, I'd love to go off the rails and make a doll of a random cartoon character, so that's what led me to the character I chose for this collab. Marvin the Martian is one of my very favorite cartoon characters from when I was a kid, so I always knew one day I would take the opportunity to make a doll based on him. The character was created by Chuck Jones in 1948, which I thought was the perfect time frame to fit in with this theme, and I find it really interesting that he was developed early in the Atomic Age. In the Looney Tune cartoons, Marvin is a science fiction villain who wants to destroy Earth because it blocks his view of Venus. Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck are his enemies who always throw a wrench in his plans. So starting out, I'm using a Goulia that I had dyed a while back. I dyed her a dark brown, and if I used a Ritz synthetic dye. And it works well. It I, Here, as I carved into it, I wasn't sure if it saturated all the way through, and it did, so I was happy about that. The bodies don't always saturate all, through, all the way through, and sometimes you can even wipe off the color when you dye the body. But um, I had a feeling that it went all the way through, so I, was, I felt confident in starting to carve. So I just wanted to take down her lips a little, and I wanted to give her a round, uh, rounder face. So I also carved her chin. You'll see a little later in this video, I started to work with a um, uh, Caddy Noir. And for a number of reasons, it just wasn't working out for me. It was, uh, the carving wasn't sanding down to get rid of all of those marks. Like usually, there, there have been some that I have some trouble with, usually the ones that have like glitter in the skin. But this one was actually just, no matter what I did, I think it was because of the color for some reason. It just wasn't, um, everything was showing up even more so on the darker colored doll. So, and, and another reason is because I wanted to sort of build up that dark color and use the base as a highlight. Um, because when you add the highlights on top of the darker color, it tends to, for me, it tended to be a little like muddy or um, dull. It wasn't vibrant, like I wanted that underglow and it worked out a lot better starting with this color. So I rooted her with the red, um, this is just some acrylic yarn, I think. So that was the other doll I was trying to work on. But as you can see, I'm starting out building the darker colors with re using uh, various shades of, or various colors of pan pastel, using red and blue, which sort of creates a purple and then adding black and that, and just building that up. Once I add some yellow, then it makes it like a rich brown color. And I'm really happy you'll see at the end how this all, all this build up turned out. And I was able to maintain like an underglow that um, it's hard to see on film, but uh, in person, I'm like thrilled with it. Mm -hmm. 
So in some areas I'm adding a little more red and others a little more blue. Just where I want uh, the colors to be more deeper or uh, more rosy. This is just the first layer and I probably did about three or four layers, not all over of course, but I'm only adding color in specific areas. And the first layer looks pretty purple as you can tell, but I did add much more yellow in the later layers to um, and, and black to darken it up and to bring out a more brownish tone. For highlights, I'm not adding white. I'm actually mixing some extra yellow in with the blue and red. As I started to add these shadows in around the nose, I started to get really excited because I really felt certain that this was going to work. I had spent so much time on that Caddy Noir days and it just wasn't turning out right. Usually that was probably the first time I've ever just completely given up on a doll. I always push through. I always work through the difficult um, issues that I'm having. And that was probably the first one that I ever just, I gave up. I ended up throwing it away and that kind of crushed me. So there you see I was working on the lips a little bit and a little bit in this video I'm going to show you a clip in real time of me working on the lips and that's sort of a sneak preview of one of my Patreon re rewards. Um, one of last month's rewards was an entire video of me working on the mouth in real time so most of that isn't in this video. So, I, But I thought I'd show a little bit of it here so you can get an idea of what I show on my Patreon um, for, for my Patreon levels. So if you're interested in joining Patreon, I do video demonstrations and tutorials each month. Not only do they participate in these, my patrons, not only do they participate in these Patreon collab videos, but they also get other rewards. So check out the link in the description if you're interested to see what's available there. So since this character is based on Marvin the Martian, I wanted to give her sort of an angry look. And um, I, so I'm making the eyes a little bit more squinted and then more like wrinkles on her forehead. Thank you.
as like a highlighter this terracotta color I use a lot of times on lips um, but this one is um, using as a highlighter and that's just gonna give her sort of the the natural shape so I'm trying to do like as few lines as possible because I don't want it to look like she has lipstick on I want her upper lip to be a little bit round. So I'm going a little bit out of the natural lip line. And just doing that sort of highlight. I'm going to use this um, chocolate brown Arteza. And I'm going to go right under that highlight. And I'm kind of giving her like a double lip line. So making it darker under there gives her that sort of... I might even go in with black. Let's see what that does. Yeah, a little bit of... It makes it look, look a little bit fuller. Okay, and then I'm going to do like a shadow on top of it with black. To sort of line it make the shape a little bit more prominent. And then in the filtrum here. You know, after several layers of white on the eyes, I start to add in the, the irises in a bit. So at this point you can see that I've added several layers of the pastel over the skin tone and left a lot of that, um, the places where you see the highlights. I just added like a little bit of yellow and um, just a tiny bit of the blue and red to make it a little more brownish. Adding some darker tones here to make that scowl look a little bit more, like make her look a little bit more mad. You guys think can you tell that this is Goya still like would you have guessed that this is Goya a Goya base by looking at just the photos of the doll I think I changed her a lot for her blush I really just used a basic red um, I avoided adding any other, uh, anything in it to lighten it, which I usually do when I add pink because it just makes it, it too dull or dry looking or like ashy or something. Typically around the eyes and some other areas for the highlights, I would use white. This I'm using a more peachy tone. That little blender that I'm using for the fine lines, that's an eyelash applicator. And you can find those. I think I have some in my Amazon shop. I have all the supplies that I use in my Amazon shop. 
link in the description below. If you purchase from there, I get a, um, a small commission and I have all the supplies that I use as well as some information on, I don't have all the supplies. I'm, I try to keep up with it, but I have as many supplies as I can put in there along with a little description on uh, how I use it. And I always like to do a little bit to the ears. I also, by the way, I ended up using a Caddy Noir body to go with this and just did a little bit of highlighting to it and that worked out pretty well. I was using a full body costume pretty much for this doll, so um, I did some body blushing on it, but I really didn't need to, uh, it, most of the doll doesn't show up or the body in the costume. For the eyes, I'm using my Caran d'Ache water uh, museum aquarell. Um, pretty much my favorite watercolor pencils. They're very soft and easy to use and show up very bright within the first coat. They're very valuable, but um, they're expensive, but they're my favorite. They were gifted to me. There she is so far. Now I'm showing you how I do some eyebrows here. Um, at the very end, um, after she was already completely done, I, I redid the eyebrows a couple of times. Um, and at the very end, um, when she was completely done, I ended up going back and going over the eyebrows with some red pencil to match the hair. And I liked how that turned out better than this. But this, I left this in here just to show you um, because this is how I typically will draw eyebrows using a base of the pastel and erasing for the shape and then going in with some pencil to give the individual hairs. it up with my fingers. I'm so sorry, but I'm using some acrylic paint to add some dots in the eyes to, for highlights. So I'm adding some mica shimmer powder, and this can't be seen on camera very well. I don't know on video or not, but um, I added it for the eyeshadow, be being very careful to only add it in specific areas and if I got it anywhere else then I try to wipe it off because it can look like dust in in some lighting um, so when I take pictures of it it may look like there's dust on her but it's actually the shimmer powder and to do that I added I added it and then at after I've given all the final sprays of Mr. Super Clear then I add the um, mica powder and then just one layer of MSC to seal that in and it will make it shimmer because because if you use the Mr. Super Clear afterwards it sometimes dulls it right out if you add too much. By the way I just wanted to let you guys know I have a sale going on for 25% off everything that's in my Etsy shop. I don't have very many dolls in there and I rarely if ever put them on sale so the two that are in there are 25% off for June only. And thank you to everybody who's been purchasing my downloadable learning guides. I really worked hard on them, filling them with all the knowledge I've gained over the past 12 years of creating dolls. The guides are super cheap already. And for June, they are 25% off. And I've been getting great reviews on them. Thank you so much. And just a heads up, I've had a couple of reviews on the beginner face-up guide saying that it's using a lot of ink to print, but please know if you purchase them, there's two versions. One of them is for printing. So make sure you're using the printable guide because it will not use all your ink up. 
So the link for my Etsy shop is in the description below if you're interested in purchasing any of those guides or the couple of dolls I have left. Thanks. So moving on to the costume, I used this red vinyl. It's a stretchy, it stretches in both directions. So it worked well for the tiny costume. I used sort of a pattern that I have of, uh, for the top and just kind of altered it to fit. A trick I did for the back, um, I had to alter, this costume needed to fit like super tight, so tight that it was like stretching on the body. So I pulled it really tight in the back and used a, one of those friction pens that can easily be wiped off to mark where I needed to. It worked well on the vinyl. I couldn't really use a um, sewing pencil for that. And I ended up doing the same thing with the pants, just using some of those clips while it was on the doll to make sure that it was nice and uh, tight to the body. I wanted as few seams as possible, so I used the pattern that had like the legs that fold over. I have another pattern that I use that does like four piece pattern, but this one's a two piece pants pattern. And I used Velcro in the back just to give it like a nice all over pull. And um, I just added a little triangle in the front to give it some detail and an interesting thing I've been doing sometimes with vinyl and uh, faux leather is using one of these pattern, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's one of those wheels to um, mark patterns and I use it to make little marks across the fabric, just makes little holes and it kind of gives an illusion of a stitch. So I'm adding a little pieces of uh, metal dots to add a little more interest. Now I'm painting up the shoes. Before I paint up anything, I just like to take off the shine with, I use like a sandpaper or nail file just to take off the shine before I add that. So um, it took me a long time to decide how I was going to make this helmet and what I was going to use for a base. And I ended up using this Monster High Laguna helmet from their, the roller skating series. And I just took everything off and I kind of struggled with what am I gonna do about these scales because it's kind of textured. And what I ended up doing is using some uh, UV resin over top of it and it made it smooth. It was very, it was really easy. So I use this thick foam. This isn't the kind of foam that has the paper on the outside. This is more of a craft foam that's like a foam plasticky material or rubbery material all the way through. And it's a little thicker than the craft foam, the foam that has like the paper on both sides. And I just cut it to shape and glued it on there with super glue. It stayed on really well. But here's the UV resin. I'm adding it all over. I did, gave it two coats and it took out the, it completely covered up the scales so I didn't have to worry about a smooth surface to paint on. I used the same foam and a uh, one of those like candy sticks that you get in the baking section of like Michael's or craft stores and I ended up going with the spur that I had for the brush that he has on top of his head and, um, stuck, and then I uh, clipped that off later. I dyed the brush with like alcohol ink. I, well, I made some alcohol ink with some yellow acrylic and alcohol, and then I dipped that in it. Using Gorilla Glue, I just connected that. And then I drilled a hole through the helmet. And I pulled the stick through and marked where I needed to cut. And I used some acrylic paint to paint everything after I had sanded it all down a little bit. And you can't see this on camera very well, but I added some mica powder to the resin so that the helmet and the skirt that I end up making in a here in a minute all have a nice little shimmery, glittery look to it. I pulled out some of this. I have this stash, stash of old like toys from different action figures and stuff that I'll pull from and customize for different projects like this. And I found the perfect sort of atomic looking gun. So I use that for her uh, 
little shooter. And here I use the same foam for the skirt. And I sewed it into the belt to make it secure because I knew that it would just fall off if I glued it. And I used one of these mattress needles. And it just worked perfect. It was so fun making that skirt. So for her hair, I just gave her a flip by flat ironing. And here is the final look. More photos of my Marvin the Martian are at the end of this video, but before that, please enjoy the presentation of the out of this world work done by my patrons. We had a great time with this collab. We've done several in the past, and this is one of my favorites. We will be doing one more this year, and voting for that theme is coming soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye!